This is how you turn a photo into canvas art in Photoshop. All right, so the only two things you need for this project are a portrait image and a canvas texture, which I got from Unsplash by just typing in canvas, and I use this one right here from KiwiHug. So let's start by just duplicating our main image layer. So just click on it and go Command or Control J to make a copy, then right click on that copy and convert it to a smart object. We're doing that so we can always go back to any of these filters we put on and adjust them as we go. Okay, so the first filter, so up here, we're gonna go to Filter and go down to the Filter Gallery. We're gonna start by putting on poster edges right here. So if I click on that one, you can kind of see right there. And for me, I have edge thickness and edge intensity both at zero and my posterization at two, but feel free to adjust it and pick what you want. I just really like for the effect that we're creating to see a little bit of blotchiness in the image. If you go too far to the right, it kind of smooths it out too much, makes it look like the original image and less kind of painty. So pick the spot that you like. I like two and I'm gonna click okay. Next, I'm gonna go back up to filter, down to blur and over to surface blur. That's just gonna help blur out some of the blotchiness of that effect that we just put on, poster edges. I'm gonna go Command or Control Plus to kind of zoom in so I can really see what's going on here. Make sure you have preview checked. So if you have it unchecked, you won't see what you're doing here on your image. And you'll just have to rely on this little section right there. So check that off so you can see. And really you're just playing around with radius and threshold until you get what you like. I'm gonna slide these down just so you can see that's with nothing. And you know I'm gonna start by just bumping my radius to like 20, and then slowly moving my threshold over. This is the one that really affects things right here. So if you go too far, you're gonna just blur out your image like crazy. And if you go too little, it's not gonna do much. So smooth it out, get what you like, and click OK. Then we're gonna go up to filter a third time, this time down to stylize and over to oil paint. In here, kind of the same thing. I like to leave these two alone. They don't really do much in this case anyway and we're just gonna play around with stylization and cleanliness. So cleanliness is the one where if I drop it down, you can see that's some of the texture of poster edges that we can see coming through. And then the higher you crank this, the more it looks like these painty lines that come in. So just play around between these two. If I drop down stylization, you can see more detail from the original image. And if we crank it all the way, then it's more painty. So for this image, I'm gonna go somewhere around like, you know, seven and eight somewhere around there, I kind of like that look, and then just click OK. Now, for this image in particular, if I look in the background here, you can now see that there's, it's kind of a mess back there. That's from that poster edges effect. So for me, I'm gonna have to go Command or Control J to make another copy. Then I'm gonna go down to the fourth tool down here. If you don't see this one, you might see Magic Wand. Go to Quick Selection Tool, and I'm gonna use this Select Subject to just select around my subject. If there's parts like, let's say here, that are not selected that you want as part of the selection, go to the plus up here and just you know paint that section back in that you need. I'd have a bigger brush than this if I was doing it. So paint that section back in. And same thing, if there's something that is not part of it that you want to include, uh, so to get out of the selection, then just you know use the minus to paint it out. So I just have this little section right here and that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect in this case. I'm gonna zoom back out. Then just go down here to this little box with a circle in it, click on that, and that'll create a mask. Now, nothing will happen because now we have to go down to the layer one, so not the copy one that we just made with the mask on it right here, but the one below, and you're just gonna unclick Filter Gallery and Surface Blur. So I'm gonna get rid of those two. And now it's just the oil paint on it, and you can see that'll make your background look, you know, unblotchy like it was for mine. All right, so at this point, we're ready to apply the canvas texture to our image right here. So I'm gonna go over to this other tab that has the canvas texture on it. I'm gonna use my move tool to click and hold it down, drag it to my main tab, drag it down, and then let go. Now it's on my main image right here at the very top. I'm gonna go Command or Control T to scale it up so it's bigger than my canvas, and then just click check. And then I just have to change my blend mode right here. So instead of normal, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna pick multiply, but you can pick color burn, for example, if you want your image to pop a little bit more or anything else if you want a different effect. So I'm gonna click multiply. And now we're ready to apply the final touches to this image to make it look even better. 
So make sure you're selected on this top canvas layer. Go down to the little half circle right here, our adjustment layers, and we're going to put on a color lookup to start. So in this top little drop down right here, if you click on that, there's a bunch of built in ones from Photoshop, but you can also go and download your own from the internet if you want as well. So for example, if we pick candlelight, it'll apply a certain LUT, like a look to it. And you know, fall colors, you can have different things. We're going to select film stock. That kind of adds a lot of contrast and a lot of color punch to the image. If you don't like how much it applies, you can always just go over to opacity here, click on this and slide this down. So I'm going to go somewhere around, you know, 80% somewhere around there. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go back down to the little half circle and add a photo filter. So again, this little drop down here, you can pick whichever ones you want in here. I'm going to stick with warming filter 85. And I think for density, I'm going to just slide this along until I get the look that I like. I like somewhere around, you know, 45, 50% somewhere in there. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, next, I'm actually going to go back down to this canvas layer because I'm going to apply these to underneath the photo filter and color lookup. So I'm going to go back to the little half circle thing. This time I'm going to put on a hue saturation. And I think I'm just going to bump the saturation back a little bit, kind of just dull it out. I want to keep the kind of punchiness and the contrast to it, but maybe not so like saturated, like the colors were maybe a little bit too much. And then I think the only other thing that I want to do here, and you might want to do this for your image too, is I kind of like how her face looks like the punchiness of this area. But I think all of this for me looks a little bit too bright. So again, I'm going to go back to this canvas layer, go to the little half circle thing, click on it. And I'm going to add a curves this time. But I'm not going to do anything yet to the curves. I'm going to click on the mask right here. I'm going to go over to this, you know, my elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to feather it a ton. So I have it feathered to 500 pixels. And I'm just going to click to the top left here and make a kind of egg oval shape over top of her face, maybe something like that, kind of even on both sides. Let go. And then I'm going to go edit and fill that with contents black, then click OK. So you can see on the mask now this black kind of blurry oval here. Everything that's in that oval, and I'm going to go Command or Control D to deselect, everything that's in that oval is not going to be affected by what I do for this curves. Everything in white is going to be fully affected. Anything gray is going to have some sort of transition effect in between. So I'm going to click back on this little icon thing right here. So I get this curves adjustment and I'm just going to click in the middle and I'm just going to darken it. I'm just going to drag this down and you can see that it's now darkening around that outside, like everything that was white around here, but it's keeping the punchiness of what the face was in the middle. So I created kind of like a little bit of a spotlight on her face there. So adjust that how you want. And that brings us to our final, final step, which is going to be to apply camera raw filter to our entire image. But just know that every single adjustment and or filter that we've applied so far can still be adjusted at this point. But once we apply camera raw filter, it can't be adjusted anymore. So once you have everything the way that you want, the final kind of image that you think, now we're just going to really fine tune it. So click at the very top on photo filter or whatever you have at the very top, hold shift, Click on layer one, not on your background original image, then go control or command J to make a copy of everything, then command or control E to merge them together. That's going to make one final image at the very, very top. Then we're just going to right click and convert that one to a smart object and head up to filter and down to camera raw filter. In here, everything we're going to deal with is in basic. So drop this down like that. We're going to start by going down here to clarity. And if I slide this all the way to the right, you can see that that adds a lot more detail, like finds the edges of the image, which makes it a little more like a sketch image than paint. So decide how much or little of that you want. I'm going to go to about, you know, 50 or so in there. Same thing with texture. The further you go to the right, the more kind of sketchy it looks. And then the further you go to the left, the more kind of painty it still looks. So I'm going to go to the left a little bit to kind of blur some of that back out. Uh, then I'm going to go down here to vibrance. I'm just going to punch it up a little bit and then take away a little saturation maybe. And then the final thing I'm going to do in here is actually on shadows. I found that it creates a cool look if you go all the way to the right. 
it'll really kind of punch up some of those interesting, well, in mine it does, punches up a bunch of those interesting details around the eyes. I'm not going to go all the way to 100. I'm going to kind of peel it back a little bit, maybe there. So once you have everything set the way you want it there, just click OK, and it'll apply it to your final image. So this is before camera raw filter, and this is after. You can still go in and adjust it if you want by just double clicking, but I'm gonna go right down to the bottom here, hold Alt, click on that. That was our original image, and this is the final result. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.